Hi, I'm Tom Chick. I'd like to teach you how to play Space Base, uh, a pretty simple dice-based Machi Koro kind of game. Uh, now I'm going to give you the turn structure, and then I'm going to tell you two really weird rules to keep in mind as I go forward and explain the rest. On your turn in Space Base, you're going to roll two dice. Then you and everyone else at the table are going to allocate dice. And then finally, you can optionally buy one card cards represent ships from the marketplace. Then it's the next player's turn. He or she rolls two dice. Everyone at the table allocates those dice. And then that player may buy one ship from the marketplace. And so on and so forth around and around the table. Eventually, someone is going to hit 40 victory points. That doesn't mean that person has won. Instead, you keep playing until everyone has the same number of turns. This little starting player marker will let you know who began the game, will remind you. And then after everyone has had the same number of turns, after someone has hit 40 victory points, whoever has the most victory points has won. I know what you're thinking. What's the tiebreaker? There is no tiebreaker in Space Base. There is instead overtime. If after everyone has had the same number of turns and one of the players has hit the 40 victory point threshold, if after then two players are tied for first place, play another full turn, a uh, full round. Everyone gets a turn. Uh, if then two more players are still tied for first place, go again. And you keep going until someone has pulled ahead. After that, uh, whoever has the most victory points at the end has won. So the turn structure, roll the dice. Everyone allocates the dice, whether or not it is his or her turn. Then the active player can buy one ship. Whenever someone hits 40 victory points, that will end the game after a full round has finished. Uh, and then we see who won. Now, the two weird rules in Space Space, I'm just going to bring them up up front, and then I'm going to put them into context. The first weird rule is that when you allocate these dice, you can allocate them as a sum or individually. For instance, if this is my die roll. So, uh, so this little uh, symbol right here with this spaceship, it's also used at other points in the game to represent victory points. This right here is a victory point. I hate that these are the same symbol pretty much. Uh, and several times I've played, people have assumed this had something to do with victory points. It doesn't. So I am going to right away apply a mod to Space Base and get rid of these dice and bring in some real dice. So if this is my roll, I may allocate it as a 7 or as a 5 and a 2. Now, the weird thing about the rule further is that regardless of how I allocate the dice, other players may use it however they like. They may use it as a 7 or as a 5 and a 2. My decision does not restrict anybody else's decision as the active player. So that's the weird first rule. The weird second rule is when you buy a ship in space space, remember the third thing on your turn, you roll the dice, everyone allocates those dice, and then the active player may buy one ship. When you buy a ship in space space, the first prerequisite, of course, as you can imagine, is that you must be able to afford it. You will have an amount of credits uh, on your player board. You must have that amount of credits to buy a ship. Duh. However, here's the weird counterintuitive thing. When you buy a ship, you zero out all your credits doesn't matter the ship's cost. You pay everything you have to buy that ship. It's a little weird, uh, and there's a reason for it. We'll get to that in a little bit. But keep those things in mind. When you allocate the dice, you can either use them as a sum or individually, and each player can decide separately how they use those two dice. And when you buy a ship, you spend all of your money. It's ridiculous, I know, but uh, remember that. I guarantee you someone at the table will forget it. They will buy a ship for three credits, and they will move their credit track down three slots. That's natural. They're not cheating. It's just the way we think of things. So keep an eye on each other. Make sure you're zeroing out your credits after you buy something. Let me now show you the components. You have, of course, your two modded dice. Uh, if you want, go ahead. Use this. Just be prepared for some confusion with people thinking this has something to do with victory points. It doesn't. You have a group of starting ships. All of these cards, with one minor exception, are ships. There are five colors for five players. Each player gets 12 starting ships. Now, if in a game you like being a particular color, for instance, I prefer blue, uh, and there's someone else in your group who also prefers blue, this is the perfect opportunity to let them be that color and make them think that you're uh, making a sacrifice and letting them have this color. Because after you choose your colors, the ships are put 
face up like this and you never see the color ever again. The color is only relevant for sorting the starting ships. So go ahead. Uh, show your magnanimity, magna <laughs> generosity by uh, letting someone else be blue. You also have ships that are tier one, tier two, and tier three. Uh, the tier one ships all cost between one and four gold pieces, with three minor exceptions. Three of the ships in here cost five, excuse me, not gold pieces, credits. The tier two ships cost between, uh, I believe, seven and nine credits. I should double check that. Uh, and the tier three ships cost between 12 and 14 credits. Uh, it's not simply a matter of they get more powerful, but it is a matter of they are all sorted by cost. We'll come back to the ships in a moment. These are the cards that are not ships. These are colonies, and we'll get to those in a little bit. You also have a player board for everyone. These clear cubes are called charge cubes. Each player will get a blue cube to track uh, uh, victory points, a green cube to track mining, and a gold cube to track gold or credits. Something else important to keep in mind is that although the board, I'll show you here, although the tracks at the bottom of the board for your victory points, your mining, and your credits, although the tracks stop at 40, there is no limit on how much of any one of these things you can have. If you have 38 credits and you somehow earn three credits, you then bring this around and you put one of these charge cubes here to show that you've lapped the credit track. There's no limit on any of the resources to 40 credits. On each board, these are called sectors. Uh, the number down here corresponds to the die rolls. Now you can probably tell by now, each sector is the perfect size to put a ship card into it. So let me then show you the ship cards. The starting ship cards are slightly different from the ship cards that you will eventually buy from the market. Uh, they have some things in common, but there's one distinction. The market ship cards will have a cost in credits in the upper left-hand corner. These numbers, uh, it's important to keep in mind these numbers here are the hard and fast rule for allocating the die rolls. These numbers here simply show you where you initially deploy, or excuse me, place the ship when you buy it or when you start the game. There are provisions for this, even though it was deployed in the one slot, to move elsewhere on the board. So it's important to keep in mind this is only relevant when you place the ship. This is relevant when you're rolling the dice. Ships all have rewards. There is a reward that is facing up with the card that represents the reward at the station. There is an upside down reward that represents the reward when the ship is deployed. Furthermore, and there's, uh, we'll come back to this in a moment, these are color coded for when you can use them. Uh, the blue boxes you use on your turn when you are the active player. The red boxes, when ships are deployed, those are used on someone else's turn. There is another brief piece of symbology I want to show you that is relevant. Some cards have a little white dot in the corner of their reward box. And by the way, green means you can use it at any point on your turn or another player's turn. The little white dot means that this isn't a reward. It is called uh, an activation. Uh, it is, is a power or ability that requires activation and is decoupled from the die rolls. We'll get to that in a little bit, but just keep in mind, if you're ever confused about what a ship does, what its ability is, keep in mind the color coding. Blue is your turn. Red is someone else's turn. Green is any time. Uh, and keep in mind that there might be a charge icon there, meaning regardless of the die roll, it is activated by charges, not die rolls. Uh, before we get further into the rules, let me go ahead and talk you through the setup of the game, which is in the, the rules book. You can just look that up, but uh, I'll show you here how it works. Everyone unfolds his or her board in front of them, takes your starting ships, whatever color you got will be irrelevant, and then you place into their corresponding slots each of your 12 starting ships, at which point you will start to see a pattern emerge. You will notice these ships all have credit symbols on them. They give you credits. Your higher numbers have little planets on them, and they give you mining, uh, which is this track right here. 
Uh, each player puts their victory points at zero, of course. They're mining at zero. And you begin with five credits. Once this is set up for everyone, each person draws one tier one ship, flips it over, and puts it in the appropriate sector. Once you've done that, the ship that was there gets removed, and this is called deploying, uh, and it's put upside down and tucked to where the red part is showing like that. Then, whatever the cost of that ship was, you deduct it from your starting credits. Once everyone has done that, refer to the sector number. The highest number gets to go first. Going around the table, the second player gets one credit bonus. The third player gets two credits bonus. And if you have a fourth and or fifth player, they each get one point of mining on their board track. Once each player is set up, you're going to want to set up the marketplace. And here is where a lot of new players uh, will suddenly feel overwhelmed because here's what the marketplace looks like. You're going to take 18 cards, six from sector uh, from tier one, six from tier two, six from tier three, and you're going to flip them face up in the middle of the table where everyone can see them. But you're not done because then you're going to take 12 colony cards. There's only 12 of them, and you're going to put all of them face up. So right off the bat, uh, a new player is looking at 30 cards available to buy at the end of his or her turn. That's going to be a little daunting. Let me show you a couple of ways you can uh, help new players through that. So as you may recall, I mentioned that the tiers of ships are distinguished partly by what they do, but mainly by uh, their costs. So early in the game, no one is going to be able to afford tier 2 and tier 3 ships. Uh, one of the things you might consider is putting them face down six cards uh, until maybe the second or third turn because no one is going to be able to afford them in the first turn. Similarly the same with the second. Uh, these all cost, which I think it is between seven and nine. Uh, don't be afraid to put these face down. And then maybe after the second turn, flip these up. After the third turn, flip these up. Or I encourage you, just tell your players, don't mess with these. Just look at the Tier 1 cards to begin with, and then worry about for the first few turns, and then worry about the other tiers later. So the beginning of the game, you can tell players, these are the only six ships that will be available to you. Similarly, the colony cards, you will note, they all have a, a sector between 1 and 12. There's only 12 of them, and they get incredibly expensive. Furthermore, you're not going to buy them until the end of the game, because if you recall, blue is something that activates on your turn, red is something that activates on another player's turn, green is any player's turn, yellow means it never activates. You have closed that slot, so no one is going to be buying colonies till later in the game. Now I'm going to jump ahead to the third thing you do on your turn. Remember the first thing, you roll two dice. The second thing, everyone allocates those dice uh, either separately or as a sum, however each player chooses. And then finally the active player may optionally buy one card from the marketplace. Let me now take you through the buy action. So if this is how the blue player, and by the way, look, there's no way to tell it's blue. <laughs> this is how the blue player began his turn. Uh, you would roll the dice, you would allocate them. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. And then using however many credits you have, you may optionally buy one ship. So let's just, for the sake of argument, pretend that this player has six credits and it is now his buy action. When you buy a ship, you simply take it from the marketplace. Uh, you have to be able to afford it by having at least that many credits. And remember, here's where the weird rule is where you will zero out all your money. If I'm going to buy this for four credits, I don't go there. Four credits, I'm done. If I'm going to buy this for four credits, I pay everything I have got. And that goes for whether I buy this or that. Um, the cost of buying a ship is everything you've got, as, and it must at least be the cost of the ship. Once you've bought the ship, you then put it in the corresponding sector, replacing the ship that is already there. This is now called, this is your station. These are the ships that are in your station, whereas the cards that get displaced are flipped upside down and tucked under your board with only the red side showing. These are considered deployed. If later on in the game, and you immediately, by the way, refill the marketplace, anytime it's a player's turn, there will always be six cards of each tier and whatever unpurchased colony cards are available in the marketplace. 
if later on I were to buy a ship that goes into a slot that is already full, as always the case, if I then, for instance, purchased this, let's say I had four credits, I don't pay three credits, remember I zero out all the credits that I've got, this replaces the ship that was there, and this is deployed. Now I've got two deployed ships, and they stack up into a column. These columns will accumulate over the course of the game, and a healthy economy will have several columns uh, that they can use on a turn. Uh, so when you buy, just remember you will immediately place what you purchased, you will zero out your money, then your turn is over, and if your mining has moved up, remember when you start the game, these are some mining cards, some of the other ones you can purchase will also give you mining. Whatever your mining is at will be the minimum amount of gold you get at the end of your turn. So if I have, let's say, let's say if I have 40 gold and for my optional buy, I buy this for three, I put it there, I deploy that, and I don't pay three gold. That is not what I do. I instead zero this all the way out. That was not a very wise investment. Uh, then the very last thing I do at my turn is I check my mining. If my gold is below my mining, I move it up and then my turn is over. Now, of course, as I am playing, let's say next turn I make a couple of gold. I don't spend it. It doesn't reset there. It's just if it ever falls below your mining level, at the end of your turn it moves up to that. You can naturally accumulate over over successive turns however much gold as you want and at a certain point that will of course be wise because the tier 3 ships cost between 12 and 14 gold and the colonies can cost up to uh, I believe 42 gold. So that's what you're going to do the third thing on your turn every turn. Uh, it is optional uh, you might want to save your gold and not buy a ship until later on. Uh, now the first things you do uh, roll dice everyone can do that uh, let me talk you through the allocating and this is the heart of space base. When it's my turn and I roll the dice, I allocate the dice to ships in my station. And that is the blue reward boxes uh, will be the rewards I get for wherever I allocate the dice. In this case, I can use it as a seven and take three credits. Or I can use it as a two and a five and take four credits. Oops, sorry, no, and take two credits. Naturally, it would be wiser to use the seven and take the three credits. Easy enough, on my turn, I'm just looking at the blue reward boxes, and those are what I get based on whether I allocate the dice as a sum or separately. Where it gets interesting is when it's someone else's turn. The other player rolls the dice, and I may choose again to allocate a six and a four, or a ten, but instead I am using the red rewards at the top of my board that come from deployed ships. So in this case, I could take one gold for the six and nothing for the four. That doesn't seem very wise. Or I could use it as a 10 and take two victory points. Keep in mind, it's, it doesn't matter how the active player used the dice. Either as a sum or separately, I decide on my own how to use the dice. Now, if you recall, the blue rewards are rewards on my turn. The red rewards are the rewards on someone else's turn, and they're only active when they're upside down and tucked underneath the top of my board. The green rewards, I can use at any time, and if it has a charge icon, regardless of when the die are rolled or what the die rolled is, I can use it if it's charged. Let me show you how those work. There are three kinds of charge cards. This, of course, means it needs one charge to use. It's green, so the charge ability can be used any time. These are three separate charges it can hold. Using the ability only requires one of them. This right here, with the little links between the boxes, means all the boxes must be filled if they're empty. And if they have pips in them, they must be filled if that number of players is playing the game. Space base goes two to five. So if you were using this cargo tug in a two-player game, this must be filled, this must be filled, and because there are two pips there, this must be filled before you can use its charge ability. If you were playing a five-player or four-player game of Space Base, this must be filled, 
this must be filled, but because there's no four or five in that box, you can then use the space tug without filling a charge right there. It'll only cost you two charges. Uh, it's a little counterintuitive. Just keep in, mind, keep in mind you must cover it if that number of players is playing the game. Now, how do you get those little charge tokens there? Well, that is where the, the ships behave like other ships. The moment that you allocate the slot a ship is in that has charge boxes, you may put a charge on that ship if there's an available square. If it's already full, no, nothing comes of it. You can't put a char. You can't put two charges in one square. That's ridiculous. Uh, sometimes the charge ships will have charges on the bottom as their deploy power, and on the top in the blue box as their at station power. If you ever have charges on the at station power when the ship is being flipped upside down and put under your board because it was replaced, any charges on that ship, if there's room for them on the upside down part, you can move them up there. Otherwise, whenever the slot in which the ship is located is activated by allocating a die to it, that's when you put a charge token there. As for when you remove it, charge cube, as for when you remove it and use the ability, that is based on the color of the box. If it's a blue ability, it's only on your turn. If it's a green ability, it's at any point. And if it is a red ability, uh, these are both blue ones. If it is a red ability, such as, nope, nope. Trust me, there's some with red abilities. If it's a red ability, it only works on someone else's turn. So when you're allocating the dice, the reward that you're getting is pretty straightforward. Most ships will give you credits or victory points. Some of the ships will give you mining points, which if you recall, is the minimum amount, amount of credits you're gonna have at the end of your turn. But there are a few odd ones that I wanna show you real quickly. Uh, and there will be some that I won't show you because they may not even come up in a game. But more importantly, the manual has a little reference on the back, and the last several pages are devoted to explaining each specific ship. Uh, just keep in mind, if there's anything that looks confusing, what color is it, and is it a charge ability? Uh, ask yourself those questions, and you can generally make sense of it. Otherwise, just go to the manual. So naturally, here are the ships that give you credits. Here is an example of a ship that gives you credits and mining. Here are ships that give you victory points. The idea tends to be that military ships give you victory points. Some ships have a what's called a command ability, which allow you to treat a die roll as if it were a different die roll. Uh, these are command ships, and you will note they require charges, hence those little icons. So if this is in my slot here, look at that three. I hope other players roll a three. When it's my turn and I roll a three and choose to, by the way, if you ever roll doubles, you may use a ship's uh, reward twice. You may receive it twice. If I roll a three, I can take a charge cube and put it there on the command ship. And that's, that's it. I've now allocated that die. At any time, because it's a green uh, box, if there is a cube there, I can remove the cube and use the ability. What these command ships do, is they let you treat a die, actually they, they let you treat two dice, hence the icon, as in this case, one number higher, or in this case, either one or two numbers higher. Meaning, if I roll a six, or if, uh, if someone else rolls a six, they're green boxes, they can be used at any turn, and I have charged command ships I may then decide to treat that six, not as activating sector six, not as allocating it here, but I can put it here. I can turn it into a seven by removing this. Alternatively, by the way, and you can, uh, you can chain these together as much as you want, I could move it one slot there to a seven. I can move it either one or two slots there, so I could push it all the way up to a nine if I had both of these command ships charged. Uh, there, that is naturally how you're going to get the higher numbers in play. The higher numbers tend to be the more powerful cards, and the command ships, with, the, with their abilities to push the dice higher, will make it easier for these to, get, to give you their rewards. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, Tier 1, all of the, the ships there cost uh, three, to four, three or four credits. Two to four credits? At any rate, they're very cheap. However, three of the ships in Tier 1 are uh, cruisers, and they are like command ships. They cost five credits, and let me show you those. A cruiser lets you, when it is uh, its reward, would you, when you would get its reward, you can treat it as you can get the reward on either side of the ship. 
Uh, there's no inherent reward from using a cruiser. Instead, you can decide which ship on either side uh, gives you its reward. And it's the same when it gets put into a slot up here. In this case, and in, in case I didn't make this clear before, you get everything cumulatively. Uh, if someone else rolls a three, I get one, two, three, four, five, six credits. If someone else rolls a six, I get one credit. Pretend this is like this. And then I may take the reward from either of the ships adjacent. I can choose either one. That's what cruisers do, and it's how they're distinguished from command ships, which must be charged. Some of the other ships let you exchange this card with another card on your board, and it's how you uh, change around the number distribution in your uh, station. Uh, this, however, tugs will let you swap two other cards. The card itself isn't swapped, but it's your six and seven sectors. In this case, uh, tugs affect other sectors, whereas these warp gates let you uh, switch between the warp gate and some other card. Some ships, and you'll note this requires a charge. Once it's charged, you can remove the charge cube and do this, and it's only on your turn. You may buy a card. Now, if you remember when you buy a card as your third optional action, it zeroes out all your money. The great thing about that little tug there, is it a tug? It's a cargo tug, uh, is that you just spend the cost of the ship. And then, of course, at the end of your turn, when it is your, your option to buy a ship from the marketplace, if you like, you can then buy a second ship. Some of these ships will let you claim cards, which is basically buying them, but without paying anything. They're free. Uh, sometimes you will see, oh, and this, by the way, uh, it has a power and it has credits in it. That's not what you pay to do the power. That means you do the power and you get the four credits. Uh, similarly, you will note this symbology here with the charges and that number. You don't pay anything to charge the card or use the charges. Each time you charge it, you get two credits. Uh, and there's nothing in the manual about that. That's a little hard to figure out. Uh, but the developers have said on Board Game Geek, that's what that means. Now, some of the other ships are going to have really funky powers. Uh, anything that's confusing, just keep in mind the color coding. Blue is your turn. Red is someone else's turn. Green is any point in the game. Uh, and whether or not it's a charge ability. If you still can't figure out what it does, the manual has everything listed. Just look in the back of the rules, and you'll find that easily enough. Uh, the final thing is, if you recall, those colonies, sh uh, they're not ships, they're colonies. You can buy those at any time. They are not replaced. And when they go into a slot, they effectively close slot sector. Remember, they effectively close the sector down. And that's only for your turn when you roll on someone else's turn or when someone else rolls a number that activates one of your sectors. You still use those red ship powers even if there's a colony there. The colony only locks out your own dice. Uh, let's see what else to tell you. So remember those two weird rules. Uh, when you allocate dice, you can either allocate them as a sum or individually, regardless of what any other player does with those two dice. And when you buy a ship during the optional third stage of your turn, zero out all your money. That's weird, I know, but you spend everything. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I am Tom Chick. If you like this sort of thing, uh, please check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash tomchick. You can find me on Twitter at QT3, and you can find stuff I write, including a review of Space Base, at quarter3.com. Cheers.